today I have the privilege of being joined by Elle Callahan. She is the, the writer and director for a Witch Hunt. Uh, uh, thank you for joining me today, and it's nice to meet you virtually. Of course, yep. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Kudos to you. I was watching this film the other night, and uh, a couple of jump scares got me good. Uh, um, I make weird noises when I get jump scared. So it was funny for my girlfriend who was in another room and, and just laughing at me because she knew what was happening. <laughs> me too. I'm actually very easily startled. I try to design my scares to scare myself. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> How does that yeah, work? I'm like, yeah, I'm very easily scared. Um, so when I write or shoot things, I'm like, okay, what would I hate <laughs> I'm gonna do that because <laughs> yeah maybe that'll work on other people too oh it worked on me it was uh and it's a lot of fun though you, you, that's that's the reason why we we watch these kind of movies yeah um you have a very very interesting concept which i really enjoyed so tell us a little bit about witch hunt of course um witch hunt is it's basically a, a story about um, that takes place in a modern America, much like our own world today, but magic is real and only women can uh, kind of express it. So there are real witches and um, they are persecuted for that by the uh, US government. So there's actually like government witch hunters and things like that. So our story revolves around a family that is part of this um, network that helps which is escape persecution and seek asylum in Mexico. Um, so this family basically takes in two young witches and tries to hide them from a witch hunter. Um, yeah, and spooky things start happening as the girls try to learn and harness their powers and um, stay out of harm's way. It, yeah, the, the 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 creepy one that got me first was was near the beginning. That's why I can I'll, can say anything about it is when she, uh, it's the the black veil in the corner. It, it, oh, yeah. it wasn't when she was standing there it's when she smiles smirks and I was uh, and then it was like boom and I was like oh yeah okay, okay got me got me good this was good yeah <laughs> yeah when we were doing that in post uh when she did that the actress that was under there I was like oh my god I hate that it's perfect <laughs> like, that <laughs> that's, is so creepy Keep that's doing a, that. <laughs> when uh when you're writing this story I, what i really liked about it, it it reminded me of one of my favorite films uh signed by m night Shyamalan, which is it's a it's a larger story that that it's nationwide worldwide but we're contained to one location one family and their um experience with what's going on can you, can you talk about writing that and your decisions to do that yeah, I always try to keep my world big, but the story small because, um, you know, in my experience in life, and I think all of us, like our, our worlds and our experiences in these bigger kind of uh, issues is, is very contained. Um, so I think that it's more relatable of a story if, if we stay small and stay with a few characters in their immediate world and have a backdrop of kind of like a bigger huge fantastical thing behind them um because at the end of the day you, you need to be able to relate to the characters or you mm -hmm. won't care about them or you won't get scared or because you won't really uh you know connect with them so my goal as a director and a writer is for my audience to feel empathy and see themselves in the characters so that's why i try to keep the immediate stories small yeah and, and that's, i think that's really what i enjoyed about it can you talk a little bit about gilding alden's portrayal here because I mean anytime she started getting uh I can say asthma more than anything or just trouble mm -hmm. breathing uh I, I think there was one moment where I started I, like felt like I couldn't breathe either she did so well yeah she did she did so well that she was like when she would do those scenes I would have to, I'd have to be like okay we need to stop for a little bit so that you can actually breathe because <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> pass out <laughs> um she's an amazing actress she brought so much to the role um, you know, aspects of Claire that I hadn't even considered when we first sat down and talked about the character, just the question she was asking me, I was like, oh, wait, yeah, we should, we should go down that route with her, or maybe she does feel this way. And I, I love working with people that have a better grasp on their particular part of the film than I do, because, you know, then they're going to make it that much better. I'm just mm -hmm. kind of there to kind of steer the ship generally, but they're the ones that are doing all that like nitty gritty work. Um, and Gideon also 
did an amazing job as a protagonist. It's really hard to be on screen for that long and carry the entire film because if you lose the audience's empathy, then you kind of lose their interest in the film. And she did an amazing job at balancing that really delicate act that Claire has of her journey of coming to terms with her acceptance of, you know, witches being people too. Um, and also, I just think that her portrayal of Claire was just so relatable. She seemed like a normal teen. If you took the magic out, it would be uh -huh. a totally normal story. And that was really important for me to have it be based, everything, their emotions and stuff based in reality, but just with this fantastical element kind of floating around in the background. Yeah, it definitely. It, 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 um, she, she feels the peer pressure of her peers to, to be one way, mm -hmm. but at the same time, she feels empathy for, for um, specifically uh, Fiona and Shay but mm -hmm. can't you know she's kind of stuck in the middle just like a regular teenager would be so yeah i, I, yeah, I can yeah. absolutely see that um i want to ask you about the federal witch hunters um and you can correct me if i'm wrong but i do remember it was it intentional that they were all men um yes um because i i wanted it to I don't, I don't know, I guess, yeah, I guess it was intentional, but I didn't even really think about that until right now. It just felt natural. <laughs> um, I based a lot of the uh, witchcraft lore in this film on like actual historical witchcraft mm -hmm. things that happened like a couple hundred years ago and the actual job of a witch hunter was always done by a man. I never came across any, any of my research, any women directly hunting and burning other women there were women that would accuse each other like we have in in the film a lot but in terms of carrying it out as a job it was all all men so I, I wanted to keep that um the same yeah because I got that I got that classic feel for it like that Salem witch hunt feel from from the federal uh bureau of witchcraft investigation as, as you call them yeah and I so. think like logically since in the world of witch hunt, only women can do magic. I feel like the government wouldn't want women to be witch hunters because like, what if they could do that? What if they were like, you know, spies or something? <laughs> like, it's like safer to just make sure that no one in there uh, could do magic, just hunt it down. Yeah, just just want wanting that control and 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 since they can't have it, then nobody can. I, I think that's- exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so actually, one of my favorite lines from the film comes from Fiona, and it comes to the effect that how can I control my powers if nobody, if if I can't practice or if I can't uh, um, learn, uh, learn? And and I think that that was that was a big thing for me is is education, and and instead of embracing it, they're you know they're just trying to suppress it, and it just makes things worse. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of important to me to kind of echo what's happened in the past when certain groups of people are cut off from their culture and they're, they're, you know, so much of their, their power and their, you know, history is, is taught and passed down from them. And when, when you start, uh, you know, displacing them and, and um, like re-educating them, like they lose wow. that. And so Fiona has this power that, she can use for good if she, you know, learns how to control it. But because her mother was burned and she's cut off from that source of education, you know, her connection to her culture, um, she doesn't know how to control it. And it's, it's frustrating. And I think that's what the witch hunters are trying to do is they're trying to, you know, isolate these girls and not allow them to fully, you know, harness what their gift really is. Um, and, you know, it's a form of control because they can control them if these girls don't know how to control themselves. Mm, yeah um we talked a little bit about it in the beginning about developing a scare you said that you you use things that scare you how how what is your process in developing scares and maybe the build up and and how you how you do that because this this film does it does some pretty good ones um yeah so with this one in particular I was trying to work I I see every film like um kind of an exercise as a director for mm -hmm. this one I was really focusing on character development and jump scares my first film had a lot of atmospheric creep. So I wanted to focus on jump scares here. Um, and I think when I design a scare, I try to make it come from a direction that the audience isn't expecting. So I like to make my audience feel very safe. Um, like they're not you know, like, oh, like a scare couldn't happen in this scene because it's 
daytime or they're talking or things like that and then having it come out of of nowhere and then the next scare that I write I try to have it be different where maybe they do think it might be coming but they know that last time it was it was so out of the blue that maybe it won't happen like that it's like it's basically you're just kind of like (laughs) I like to uh kind of mess with the trust of my audience like always kind of keep (laughs) them on their toes so having a good variety is good and and also not oversaturating it because if you have too many scares in there then people start to become like used to it and immune so <laughs> yeah no i think it's done very well uh, i find that every every project brings uh, a learning opportunity and some somewhere you can grow uh, so i want to mm-hmm. ask you what did you learn from working on on a witch hunt um well i learned a lot about uh stunts <laughs> Okay. We had a lot of stunts in this in this movie. So, um, you know, we had real fire. We had a whole scene where we were drowning women. Um, you know, Claire, uh, one character falls off a, a building. Um, and I hadn't done a lot of stunt work before so that I had a big learning curve there as a director, but I had, um, you know, a stunt coordinator that was amazing. And um, we really took our time with it because you have to make sure that everyone is super safe. Um, mm-hmm. The safety of your cast and crew is the of the utmost importance. Um, so I learned a lot in, in that respect, um, but now I kind of, I got the bug and I want to do more because they're really fun. <laughs> it's really fun <laughs> to, you know, jump off a building. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so well, how was that for you filming that the first time that that stunt took place when she has this your your uh stunt that falls off the building uh, um it was really exciting to film it but it's also there's so with film since or with stunts since you have to be so safe there's so much time spent practicing mm-hmm. it for such a small like time-wise like such a quick moment um and it's a lot of buildup and then you're like, oh, it's over. <laughs> like, okay, let's, let's do it again. But, you know, maybe it would have been in slow-mo. So it's actually, you know, uh, less quick on screen. Um, but it felt, I was very nervous because obviously it's the stunt um, actors. That's what they do day in and day uh-huh. out. But for us normal people, this is not <laughs> something we do a lot. So I was very nervous, <laughs> but um, soon it just became very fun once, once you're, uh, you know, more used to all the safety precautions and, you know, what you're actually doing and you've done all these practices, then you, when, once you get going, it's, it's really fun. And you don't, you don't want to stop. You're like, oh, now I have to go to a dialogue scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, I'm really happy that you got to enjoy that. That sounds, that sounds like a lot of fun for a director. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your time and your insight on your film. I'm going to be real honest with you. The things I wanted to ask you about, I cannot because it gives away too much. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have notes here that have consistency. Nope, nope, nope. Because uh, uh, it, it, uh, it good, mo- great moments that I think the audiences are going to enjoy themselves. And um, just, a, just a great film, I think. Yeah, well, great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's my <laughs> goal as a director. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Um, Again, thank you. It was nice to virtually meet you and I hope to talk to you on a future project. Great, me too. All right, take care. Bye.